Hey everybody, today we're going to wrap up our study of biomes with this awesome read aloud. This book is just for you to listen and enjoy. There's no extra assignment that goes with it. Many biomes, one earth, exploring terrestrial biomes of North and South America. Where do we live? It sounds like a simple question. We live in houses and apartments. We live on streets and in states and countries. But each of us also lives in a natural home, a home that was here long before people were. Scientists have a name for our natural homes. They are called biomes. Biomes can be on land or in water. This book takes you through the land or terrestrial biomes of North and South America. Figuring out what biome you are in isn't always easy. People have changed most biomes by building cities, planting crops, and cutting down trees. Look for the right trees, animals, weather, and other clues, however, and you can still discover the biomes of our planet. To start collecting clues about Earth's different natural homes, put on your hiking shoes and grab your backpack. Where do we live? Let's take a trip to find out. Tundra. If you like cold, and I mean cold weather, you'll love this biome. During the long dark winter, temperatures plunge to 70 degrees below zero. Legions of lemmings survive by burrowing under the snow and gobbling up buried lichens, mosses, and shrubs. That shaggy white rock is a polar bear with special fur and a thick layer of fat to keep her snug. When summer finally comes, the sun shines 24 hours a day, and the snow melts into shimmering ponds and streams. Geese and sandpipers migrate here to feast on swarms of mosquitoes and crane flies. Caribou come to graze and give birth to their young. Most visitors don't stay long. In a few short weeks, winter will again throw its cloak over the tundra, driving them away for another long, cold season. Just south of the tundra, a 4,000 mile wide boreal forest or taiga stretches from Newfoundland all the way to Alaska. Spruce are the most common trees here. Often they are packed so close together, they block out light for other plants. Most spruce don't grow very tall because taiga soils are poor and long cold winters keep the growing season short. Pictures of the taiga often show moose. Moose live in many places, but this is their favorite home. Moose weigh up to 1,000 pounds. In winter, their four stomachs help them digest twigs and bark. In summer, moose eat fresh leaves and dunk their heads underwater to reach tasty water weeds. As in the tundra, millions of birds migrate to the taiga each summer to raise new families. Clear the runway. There's a rare whooping crane coming in for a landing. The beauty of the mountains can take your breath away. So can the cool air. This biome is way up high where air is thin and it's hard to breathe. The sun doesn't feel hot, but it will burn bare skin. Only the hardiest plants survive up here. Pine and spruce trees cling to rocks and thin layers of soil but they are stunted by the cold and the wind. Very high up, you're lucky to find even a patch of moss or lichens. During winter, snow falls up to 30 feet deep here. Pikas gather hay piles of plants to feed them through the winter. Most other animals hibernate or spend the coldest months down in the warmer valleys. In spring, snow melts and columbine and goldenrod flowers turn mountain slopes into dazzling meadows. That grizzly bear has just left its winter den. Right now, it's slurping up juicy earthworms, but keep your distance. It can chase down a speeding mountain goat when it's in the mood. Temperate deciduous forests. Each fall, this biome blazes with color as maples, oaks, and birches drop over 10 million leaves on every acre of rich forest soil. These trees are called deciduous trees because they lose their leaves each year. 
Poke under the crunchy leaf layer and you'll find more salamanders than anywhere else in the world. Their colors may make them look like toys, but don't touch. Their bright skin warns. I have poisonous skin. Play with something else. By dropping leaves, deciduous trees protect their tender tissues from the oncoming winter. Still, this biome is a temperate place. It rarely gets too hot or too cold. Winter snows soon turn to spring rains as symphonies of songbirds migrate here from the tropics. Through the summer, the birds eat insects and raise new babies. Then they return south as the lovely rain of fall leaves begins once more. Temperate Evergreen Rainforest. If you want to hug a giant, don't miss this biome. Everywhere you look, 300 foot redwood and fir trees tower over you. They sprout from rich soil and are watered by up to 15 feet of rainfall each year. Like the spruce and pine trees you've already seen, most trees here are evergreen. They hang onto their leaves or needles all year long and keep the forest smelling spicy and fresh. Standing in this forest is like being in a living library. You don't hear much, but a collection of life surrounds you. Elk keep the forest floor mowed by grazing on ferns, skunk cabbage, and liverworts. Berries abound. If you pick them, make sure a black bear doesn't join you. Rotting logs provide food and shelter for almost 200 other kinds of birds, mammals, and amphibians, not to mention that banana slug crawling up the tree. Temperate grasslands or prairie. Temperate grasslands are where the deer and the antelope play. In every direction, blue grandma and buffalo grass stretch beyond the horizon. These plants are great grub for buffalo and other big grazing animals. Look closely, the grasses are also home to restless armies of crickets, butterflies, and spiders. Only about 10 inches of rain falls on these grasslands each year. Drying winds never cease. Prairie dogs, jumping mice, and other rodents dig tunnels into the earth. Rattlesnakes, and black-footed ferrets also crawl into these cool, dark passages to hunt. In tunnels, animals need less water than they do above ground. A tunnel is the best place to be when temperatures soar and summer lightning fires sweep across the prairie. Desert. Deserts are even drier than grasslands. Here, the sun scorches the earth and rain rarely falls. Cactuses and many other plants have thick leaves that store water and waxy skins that keep them from drying out. Handle with care. Cactuses are also covered with sharp spines. These spines help block the sun's rays and keep the cactuses from cooking. Billions of beetles and other insects thrive in the desert. Their hard shells, or exoskeletons, help their bodies hold onto water. Someone might tell you that the venomous Gila monster can kill you by breathing on you, but don't believe it. These lazy lizards must bite you to inject their poison, and they will do that only to defend themselves. Like most animals here, Gila monsters stay underground or in the shade during the hottest days. Under the cool moon, they venture out to hunt, mate, and explore. Chaparral. Chaparral plants grow mostly in winter, not in summer. That is because the sun shines all year, but only in winter do storms bring rain so plants can grow. Oak trees and sweet smelling shrubs hold the soil in place on this biome's rocky slopes. You may have seen these plants in Hollywood movies. However, the bigger stars here are the endangered California condors soaring overhead on their nine foot wings. Like many desert plants, chaparral plants have thick fleshy leaves that help them survive hot, dry weather. 
In summer and fall, blistering Santa Ana winds whip roaring fires over the land. The blazes often terrify people, but without the fires, many plants would disappear. A lot of chaparral seeds need fire to sprout. Fires also burn away old dead brush and let in light for new plants to grow. Warm temperate forest. In this biome, year round sunshine keeps bodies warm and frequent rains water a cornucopia of pleasing plants. On drier high ground, long leaf pines reach toward the sky. Gopher tortoises graze on grass and dig 35 foot long burrows into the sandy soil. An assortment of creatures from indigo snakes to Florida mice share these natural community centers. As you walk down into the swampier areas or bottomlands of this biome, you'll find that pines are replaced by tupelo, magnolia, and cypress trees. These plants put up with months of flooding as water from winter and spring storms covers wide, shallow valleys. Over nine-tenths of the birds in eastern North America spend at least part of the year in these forests. That night heron better watch out for the big bumpy log floating nearby. Savanna or tropical grasslands. Temperate biomes have four seasons. Here in the savanna, there are only two, a wet season and a dry season. During the wet season, frequent rains pound the soil. The rest of the year, the dry season, the earth is baked hard by the hot tropical sun. Savanna soils are poor in nutrients, but hundreds of species of front bunch grasses, woody shrubs, and other flowering plants grow here. In places, scattered trees also cast precious shade. Near the end of the dry season, fires sweep across these grasslands. The fires burn away dry stems and release nutrients for new plant growth. Grasses and herbs quickly sprout after a fire. 20,000 years ago, you might have seen mammoths, giant ground sloths, and pony-sized horses eating the plants. Now deer and the world's largest rodents grow fat on these natural pastures. Tropical dry forest. Like the savanna, the tropical dry forest also has only two seasons. In the wet season, swarms of insects make juicy snacks for centaur lizards and trogons raising their young. In a tree full of figs, you're likely to see a family of white-faced monkeys. The monkeys help spread the forest seeds around, but watch your head. They also have a good aim with ripe figs. When the dry season begins, a host of deciduous trees drop their leaves. This helps them use less water. Many plants also flower now. This is good news for hummingbirds and bees, but for most animals, the dry season is a tough time. Monkeys, deer, and tapers gather near streams where there's more food and water. Butterflies migrate to wetter forests or become inactive until the rains and food return. Tropical rainforest. To finish your journey, you'd better pull on some rain boots. In this biome, there's only one season, wet. In the tropical rainforest, rain falls in buckets every month of the year. The storms water so many plants that it's often hard to see the sky. On just a couple acres of forest, you can find more kinds of trees than grow in all of the United States and Canada. More species of animals live here than anywhere else on earth. Biologists believe that 30 to 50 million kinds of insects fly, crawl, and burrow through this forest. They share this biome with thousands of species of reptiles, amphibians, and birds. Do you see that jaguar hiding behind the tree? Jaguars are the largest wildcats in North and South America, 
and the top hunters here. These big cats are shy and stay well away from people. Many biomes, one planet. Congratulations, you've just traveled through every major biome in North and South America. As you can see from the map, many of the biomes you visited are also found in other parts of the world. The plants and animals may look different in different places. However, the basic weather, soils, and seasons of our natural homes are the same in America as in Asia, Europe, Africa, or Australia. It's important to learn all about of Earth's natural homes because all biomes work together to support life on Earth. Forests make oxygen that all of us use. Mountains collect snowfall that melts to water places thousands of miles away. Visiting different biomes is fun, but it also helps us make smart choices. Choices about taking care of the wonderful planet that we all depend on. After all, there's really only one answer to the question, where do we live? We all live on planet Earth.